Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. Tonight, Latah County is considering closing its jail because it has fallen into disrepair and county commissioners discuss their options this afternoon. Creme 2 Shannon Mowdy joining us live in the studio tonight with why the sheriff's office says the jail is failing. Shannon? And the Latah County Sheriff's Office painted a grim picture of the future of the current jail and the costly options the county now has to consider. There was no holding back on Reality Tuesday. We have to maintain the current codes under the Idaho jail standards. It's just we fail it. The Latah County Sheriff's Office says the 51 year old jail underneath the courthouse is physically failing from sewer and plumbing issues to failing a state fire inspection this year. But just various compounding issues on um, the cost, what it's going to take to uh, just bring our, our jail up to standards. Chief Deputy Tim Best says it's decades of issues, like updating fire suppression and egress, which don't have cost estimates yet. One major issue. The cell doors aren't wide enough under state standards and could cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix. When it comes to fixing those doors, the doors are embedded into the walls and the ceilings of a basement that supports this upper of the upstairs. And that's added liability for Latah County, Sheriff Richie Skiles said. Now the question's whether fixes are a good use of taxpayer dollars or whether the county should throw its pocketbook behind a new building. Isn't it about $190,000 per bed? Correct. Yeah, do the math. We're looking at 75 bed jail. That's just for a jail. Best says it could cost 30 to 40 million for a new law enforcement center, not including the cost to buy the land. And there are only two options to fund a new jail. One is to push state legislators to renew a local tax option. Nobody's provided any answers in Boise yeah. about, you know, a statewide solution. The other's a bond, putting the bill to taxpayers. County commissioners have now tasked the sheriff's office with presenting them with alternatives and cost estimates as soon as possible. Shannon Mowdy, Creme 2 News. All right, Shannon, thank you very much. In other news tonight, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students is back in an Ada County courtroom today for a closed hearing. A judge is considering whether Ann Taylor will stay on as Brian Koberger's defense attorney. This comes after changes to Idaho's public defense system that took effect on October 1st. The court will consider how Koberger's defense will be paid. Taylor had previously been paid by Latah County to represent Koberger. The court hasn't released a decision yet. All right, let's talk weather. Another beautiful day across the region with highs topping out again in the 70s. It was beautiful. Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legu is standing by right now. And Jeremy, the warm temperatures today, it sounded like the best, but the rest of the week is still pretty good. Rest of the week is still pretty good. I mean, if you wait a half an hour, we're talking perfect walking conditions. News wraps up at 530. Head out for a nice half hour walk. Meet us back here at 6. Problem solved. 75 degrees right now. And staying mild across much of the region, mid 70s just about everywhere, 70 in Sandpoint, 80 in Lewiston, close to it out in Othello. It's a warm one, but there's our incoming cold front. And as that moves in, expect changes in our overall weather pattern. Really for us, it's going to be a little bit of cloud cover and a little bit of wind. Emphasis on a little bit of both. Tomorrow, I think we have increasing cloud cover throughout the day. We'll start with some high atmospheric clouds. Those will become mid atmospheric clouds by the evening and then move out. Thursday winds up clear, but because of it, very, very cold in the morning. Tomorrow we still top out near 70 degrees and then it's mid 60s the next couple of days. Biggest impacts going to be those frosty mornings later this week. All right, sounds good. Jeremy, we'll check back in with you later in the show. New today, the city of Spokane Valley left with questions following the vandalism of 18 trees along the Appleway Trail, causing close to $9,000 worth of damage. Crimpty's Christian Garza had a chance to speak with a spokesperson for the city and to see what's left of those trees firsthand. Christian. I'm here at Appleway Trail, where back in May of this year, 100 of these trees were planted as part of Spoke Canopy, which aims to bring shade and beauty to the rest of the region. However, 18 of those 100 trees now look like this, just a mound of dirt. And as you can see, there's a row of mounds of dirt way uh, going 
down this row right here, all of these trees were vandalized over the weekend. Now the city was first notified about this vandalism on Monday morning where they found these trees snapped in half. The trees were planted back in May as part of the Spokanopy expansion in celebration of Expo 74's 50th anniversary. Spokanopy is a collaborative program between the city of Spokane Urban Forestry and Lands Council to ensure that everyone in the region has access to trees and green spaces. The overall goal of Spokanopy is to make sure every neighborhood in Spokane has close to 30% canopy cover by 2030. Jill Smith, the communication manager for the city of Spokane Valley, says that this whole situation is very disappointing for the morale and future for the community. You know, this vandalism certainly doesn't represent the um, Spokane Valley community and the residents. Obviously, it's um, upsetting. The Spokane Conservation District says that each of the trees planted cost around $500, which means that whoever came and cut down these trees with a saw caused close to $9,000 in damages. Smith says that a police report has been filed, but she isn't sure if they're going to replant the trees that were vandalized. Now, the Spokaneopy is having another tree planting event. It's going to happen on October 18th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m in the area of Glass Park and East Heroy Avenue. In Spokane Valley, Christian Garza, Krem 2 News.